spending all week outlining the reasons why our kids can't read, and there is a lot getting in the way. The reality is that there are problems at home, problems in schools, and problems in our society that are making it harder for kids to be reading at the level they should be. And what I've learned from speaking to experts is that relying on just the instruction your child is getting at school might be enough to keep your child learning at grade level, but it also might not. So if you want your kid to be a part of these statistics we keep telling you about, it's really up to you as a parent to be the leader of your child's literacy education. Thankfully, there are people out there to help. This is Literacy Night at Citrus Cove Elementary School in Boynton Beach. Parents, teachers, and kids sharing their love of reading. Practice, practice, practice. Dr. Natalie Cromwell, the principal at Citrus Cove, is hosting the first in what she hopes will be many of these nights to get parents more engaged in their children's literacy education. I felt that this was very important to plan this evening in order to create that school home connection. I asked some of the parents and students why they thought so many kids right now are struggling to read. A common answer kept coming up. So many distractions are keeping kids away from books. I think, you know, it's, uh, being motivated and uh, sitting down to learn to read, I think it's difficult for a uh, six-year-old, but you know, I think he's, he's, he's doing it. Is there specific things that she struggles with? The motivation to read, you know, in a world full of tablets and other things, sitting down with a book can be a challenge sometimes. So how do you do it? Rewards, just try to find some motivation, make it fun. My teacher, she normally says if you, you don't like a subject, that's because you just don't know it yet. Experts say that's the key. Find ways to get your kids to fall in love with reading. We have a roll and read, which is like a, a sight word game that parents can play together where they get to roll numbers and find words and read them together. So it makes that learning fun, but also interacting in a positive way with their children. I mean, teachers only have a set amount of time during the day, right? Yes. To be able to teach kids how to read. It's got to keep going, right? Throughout the in, entire the day, entire the week, and all year long. Absolutely. And if it's important to the parents, it's going to be important to the children. School board member Erica Whitfield hopes other schools will join Citrus Cove hosting these literacy nights. She says the district does not take the disappointing literacy numbers lightly. I think it is actually the most important thing that we do here at the district is making sure that students are ready to go out in the world and can consume any information that they want to and be able to judge it critically. Whitfield tells me what the district is doing to get kids kindergarten ready to interact more with parents and to add more training for teachers will start to get more kids where they need to be. Right now we're at about 54 percent of the schools reading on grade level at third grade and we would really like to see that get into the 70s and 80s. In addition to what's happening in schools there's plenty of free community resources for kids and parents. The Literacy Coalition of Palm Beach County provides services to over 50,000 kids in the county. That's where these kids are getting some free after school tutoring but they also provide free books to families and some in-school help. Through the Grow Lit Project, Leroy Kelson is actively working to get more books into more underserved homes. I think it starts early. I think you have to cultivate a love for reading very early on in life. I think as kids um, continue to get older and they don't have access to it, they grow with a disdain for it. And of course, there's the Palm Beach County Library System, whose 17 branches boast after school events and activities and access to millions of books, all with a free library card. After all of that, if you feel like your child may have an issue with dyslexia or another reading deficiency, talk to your child's teacher about it. That's always the first place to go. But if you feel strongly that you need help from outside the school, former Exceptional Services Education Director and mother of a daughter with dyslexia, Valerie Harris says you should talk to an advocate. If they recommend that you fight for a particular service, definitely fight the district. In Palm Beach schools, um, those are the parents that get the services they need. If they are loud enough and create enough problems for the district, then they are going to do a better job serving your student. But that is a last resort. There are a lot of people and resources out there for struggling readers. What's most important is that you understand what is out there and what your child needs.
And right now you can go to cbs12.com. We have a link to all sorts of resources uh, for parents. You, know, you can get free books, free tutoring. I uh, just have some of your questions answered about your kid's literacy education, including a lot about dyslexia. So we are five days in now. You're reporting on why our kids can't read. What is your big takeaway? What do you hope parents have gotten sure. out of this week? So, you know, one of the reasons I started on this path, I have two second graders uh, at home. I know that this is a challenge. A lot of parents have talked to me about how their kids are struggling. This is what I can tell you. It's important for parents to know that you need to be active in your child's path to learning how to read. You have to have an open dialogue with your student's teacher, but you also cannot wait for them to tell you that something's wrong. You've got to read at home with your child, sometimes just in front of them, uh, and you have to be aware that sometimes you have to push harder to get the help your child needs at school. The bottom line is, if your child is struggling, you can't just assume that one day they're going to just figure it out because there are a lot of barriers working against them. Yeah, it's a lot of good reporting this week, Matt. Thank, Thank you, you, Sam. If you missed any of it, you can right now go and listen to our audio documentary, Why Our Kids Can't Read. You can find this right now on CBS12.com or you can listen to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Just search for Why Our Kids Can't Read.